Hello everyone and welcome to another one of my illustration videos. This time we're jumping straight into action um, because I'm gonna show you how I transfer my sketch onto an actual, you know, painting area. So this is an A4 sketch and the painting size is A3. So what I do is I enlarge my sketch in Photoshop, print it onto two pieces of A4 printing paper, which I then cover and pencil lead and I tape it in place and I gently transfer the sketch onto watercolor paper. This time we're using a different watercolor paper and uh, they didn't have my regular paper at the store that I usually go to so this is a, a Fabriano a hot pressed watercolor paper and it's a bit more white than what I'm used to, but it was still very, very pleasant to paint on, so I'm not complaining. Um, in this video, we're going to do something different. I'm actually going to show you only the line art and the background work of the painting, just because this painting is a little bit more... Um, I don't want to say... Um, scary and it, it has to do with zombies there's a lot of brains and even if those brains are these brain the, even if the brains are you know cartoonish and in my style I still felt that it was a bit too bloody for you know better safe than sorry so besides there is actually nothing really um, new to what I'm doing at the end of the painting um, I actually thought that the background part was the most interesting because I'm trying something new that I've never tried before. So, um, the line art, I'm actually going to talk about the line art a bit more. We've never done this um, in my previous paintings, my previous videos. Um, and I think I'm actually doing, a, you know, I, I don't know if I'm the only, <laughs> of course I'm not the only one, but I've seen a lot of artists who actually put a lot of pressure onto the line art and I agree with them that the line art is can be very important to the painting but I just do it a little bit um, back backwards I suppose because as you can see I don't really pay attention uh, to how I'm doing the lines especially in this painting because this painting is, um, is supposed to have a very grungy feel so I wanted the lines to be even more sketchy than I would normally do. So you can see I'm kind of going over the lines a lot later on and making them very smudged and just not what I would usually do. Um, but I also never ever pay attention to any weight of the line. Um, I've seen uh, artists just, for example, making lines darker in the shadows and I will actually do it because I thought whoa maybe I'm doing something wrong you know I, I should pay attention to that but I'm actually doing that at the end of my painting process because um, for me the initial line art is a bit more like an underpainting it's just supposed to put um, have help me keep everything put the whole you know line art because the line art is very important to me it's actually the whole thought process already went into that line art. It's not like I'm doing anything special anymore. Um, I worked on the idea and every detail, almost every detail, in the sketch, um, you know, part of the process. So I don't want anything of that to be lost. There is already plenty lost while I'm transferring. I always feel that the uh, the sketch is not the same once I transfer it. It loses a lot of its, its, its goody, you know, goody feeling. <laughs> so, um, and then after I put all the layers of watercolor and Copic and um, colored pencil, a lot of that line is actually lost. It's very um, blurred and and thinned and just it's not visible anymore. So, at least not as much as now. Uh, so to sharpen it and then I will actually go over the lines 
and thicken them or uh, leave them as they are, or actually put a white over them. That's when I actually work on the liner at the very end of the painting. So uh, that was a very big sigh of relief because, you know, <laughs> lines are important. If you already do it, do them right. Um, I am not giving advice, actually. What the hell? Ugh. Anyway, so this painting uh, is actually a gift for a friend who turned 30 a few weeks ago. And uh, I thought since this was such a nice round birthday that I would do something special. And uh, I've decided to have given him a unique painting um, inspired by his interests. So he is very much into zombies as you might have, you know, guessed. And, uh, and he likes barbecuing, so, you know, that's as far as a pun as I will go, as cooking dead. That's, that's seriously my, the, the peak of my abilities when it comes to joking, and I am not the funniest person, seriously. So, okay, maybe not the most punny person, because people still laugh at me, so I suppose I'm... So, never mind, never mind. Um, so I've decided to combine everything together, and... Uh, if you don't, if you know actually The Walking Dead, you probably recognize this idea because I was inspired by a Walking Dead poster. This poster, and um, initially I wanted to just make a kind of a parody, my own uh, style, but you know, the original poster, so original poster painted in my style. But then I, you know, as I started to get the ideas and I <laughs> went with it, I was like, why, why just do it? Some, I, I like to do original stuff. So I kind of um, got inspired by the zombies from the Plants vs. Zombies. As you can see, those faces are very, you know, um, very s not similar, but they're kind of inspired. Like, I can see it a little bit. They're just very um, scully. I wanted them to be a little like a skull but just with thin layer of skin over it and those missing limbs and it was very um, hard to actually draw zombies in my style because I, I don't draw scary stuff and I don't draw gore and uh, once I actually got the idea how to how to draw zombies that would satisfy me and, and I could actually draw them then it became easy but before that oh I was struggling I was really struggling I even draw some zombie cats and that's another part of um, of, of the inspiration by the friend because they actually have two cats and I thought it would be really cute to include them as well plus I always wondered why there you know can there be like zombie cats why do they have to be always, you know, eaten? I'm an animal lover and, you know, badass zombie kittens make sense to me. So, um, also with the character, it started as Rick Grimes, obviously. <laughs> Once again, the poster, Rick Grimes, you know, the same pose. But then, you know, the cooking dead idea came up and the friend is an actual, you know, he loves barbecue. He loves his barbecue. So this is his actual barbecue exact same model and I have no idea why he's um, barbecuing brains but it made sense at the time <laughs> also I really like despite how, how crazy it looks I love the idea of a um, of a hand mixer <laughs> in the original poster there is a gun but I love the idea of a mixer it's, um, especially pink one I don't know why, it's just something about a guy like that with a very firm expression and then a head mixer. So I kept adding stuff like the apron with the kiss the cook, which kind of also played on the contrast between, you know, this is a zombie apocalypse and it's supposed to be so serious, but there's like, you know, crazy pink apron. Um, also the giraffe. I mean, it, somebody asked me why a giraffe, and I just reply, replied with, why not? I mean, it's a giraffe. It's there so that people ask, can ask why. You know, they, 
they take interest and then that's that's all it's about you know to keep the interest in the picture I oh, can't speak anymore so that's um, here I started to paint the fence and when I realized how much work it's going to be I decided to fill in the area a little bit with posters like you know signs that are on top of the fence so I've added a little zombie zoo sign with a little skull in there and the beware sign and the brain zinc, which is a little nod towards the plants vs zombies. And uh, they actually came much easier than I expected. I had a lot of fun painting those, those signs and even though they were not in the initial um, sketch, I thought they fit so well. And here I'm adding another poster. This is a kind of an inside joke uh, in between me and the, my group of friends. Just when I started to um, think of an actual illustrator career, I had this story about um, a hamster and a whole like bunch of pictures with a hamster in it. And uh, then somebody told me to just uh, I should put a hamster in every single um, picture of paint, just to kind of like you know. But it's always there. So obviously when I started to paint um, this picture, I heard, you know, you have to put a, a hamster in it. And I did. And it's a wanted poster because everybody wants him. Makes perfect sense. And there's the cooking dead sign, just so I, I wanted it to be obvious. Um, it's obvious to me, but as I said, I'm not the most punny person, I suppose. And I've actually decided to include the whole process of me drawing this fence. This is the most annoying part of this painting. Seriously, it took me more time than everything else put together. Um, I could have done it with a ruler, but I really dislike the way lines look when you use a ruler to paint them, to draw them in, I mean. Um, I used to do the lines with the ruler and the pencil first and then go over them with the fine lighter but nobody has time for this anymore and I was really um, I was painting this actually in the same day the day of the party when um, when the friend was supposed to receive this painting and you know I, I, I needed to make it fast so and of course by now I have the confidence actually um, you know to, to draw it because I was actually surprised how easy it was to draw in all the lines it, it may look really like nothing but for me you know drawing so many lines that are actually even was a pretty big achievement I mean I knew they didn't have to exactly be even because of course the fence is not completely straight there's a dent here and there So I'm actually going to spare you the, the agony of sitting through another side of this fence, like the opposite side. And here I'm just going to um, jump straight into my favorite Copic gel, which is the W3, a warm grey color, like a medium tone, warm grey color. And this is the difference that I, uh, I was talking about and something new that I've done for the first time ever. I'm actually going to use the Copic marker. Uh, on the background first before putting any watercolor and I'm going to put it very heavily it's actually going to set the tone uh, to the whole painting so I'm refilling it here as you can see <laughs> both my colorless blender and my uh, warm gray and I'm trying to use them kind of together because uh, if you're not familiar with Copic markers when you use a colorless blender first on top of the paper to kind of um, soften it, make it wet, it has a little bit more of a softer watercolor look to it, but in the end I kind of gave up on it because it didn't make much difference in the overall 
look I wanted to achieve. So here you can just see me outlining all the characters with that Copic marker. I'm using the uh, colors blender mostly on the eyes. It's just to deepen the shadows. Uh, I wanted to emphasize that grungy look. So, and I felt this really, really helped that effect. And here you can see me using that new technique I was talking about. Of course, it's not very new. I mean, um, marker users will probably know it. But I never used it before, so for me it was really new, and uh, especially on watercolor paper, it was very tricky. So I'm actually putting a layer of my warm grey and then dripping colorless blender straight from the bottle on top. So the colorless blender pushes the ink, the warm grey ink, aside and creates kind of like bubbles. To me it looked very very messy and grungy and kind of also like a fake watercolor. I thought it really fit and I liked it. I had so much fun with it. I actually overdid it a bit so. And because this this painting is already so messy that I wasn't really afraid of any bleeding. Especially, as you can see, it kind of bleeds onto the car and under the tape, but it's very minimal, at least at this point. I keep adding a colorless blender because it's um, not spreading very well. <laughs> this paper <laughs> sinks in it very, very quickly. And here I'm just continuing the same. I've realized that I didn't have to use the colorless blender immediately, that it still had the same effect um, even if the warm grey was laying a bit longer on the paper, so if it was, let's call it dry. And here I thought I had an ingenious idea of using the warm grey straight from the bottle to help myself, you know, it was a big area I needed to fill, and in theory it is a good idea. It is a really good idea, but um, you have to be very careful with it. What I didn't know, and luckily for me, this paper was big enough to actually accommodate this mistake. Uh, with all the ink that I've put on this paper, once again, um, people who actually use markers will, will know. But I didn't. I don't use that much ink ever. And you can actually see that the ink is seeping into the paper and under the tape. It's in places it's not supposed to be. Normally when I paint I use the tape to um, leave a white border around my painting. In this case this, this painting was supposed to be uh, in a big frame so there was no need for, for a border and thank god for that because uh, I would be devastated if I, if I, if, yeah, this painting would, you know, would not be ruined, but it would be a big problem. So, next time I really have to be more careful with how much ink I'm putting on the paper. Uh, and here I'm actually already going into watercolors. Um, it's the only part of the watercolor uh, process that I'm actually including, because I wanted you to see um, I don't know, you can't really see it, you have to feel it, you have to paint it yourself. But the watercolor spreads a little bit different on top of the Copic. Uh, I have a feeling it, the, the, the water and the, uh, the, the pigment, it emphasizes the colorless blender. So those circles, even on the places, like if I drop a dot of the colorless blender on top of the paper, the watercolor will look different in that spot than on normal plain paper, just without the blender. So that's a really, really interesting texture, I suppose, pattern texture, just very interesting effect. And it really fit with the mood that I wanted to set. Here, you can, if, you, if you look really closely, you can see it. Once the uh, color dries, the circles that are uh, made with the colorless blender, they are even more emphasized. 
they, because they have, you know, a little bit of the grey at the edge, you can see them much better. So the, the top portion of this painting is an actual, it's, it's a gradient uh, from, gray, uh, from brown to through yellow to blue. <clears throat> um, because I wanted it to look a little bit vintage, I suppose. With no particular reason. Um, I actually, I really just like the vintage look and the car was is vintage, so... I don't know, it, it makes sense to me. Also the kind of old, grungy... I said grungy so many times during this video. But that, that effect kind of reminds me of old photographs and... It kind of all, you know, made sense altogether. So here I'm putting the uh, last layer of the gradient. And whenever I'm doing a flat wash, if you watch my other paintings, you will know I'm uh, tipping the surface always, if I can, <laughs> most of the time I can, <laughs> because then I let the water do most of the work for me, it just pulls the color down, and then I try to blend it within, with the yellow a little bit. And then I'm using the exact same color, just a little bit thicker, the same blue color, on the car. And once again, you can see how the watercolor kind of um, lays on top of the marker and seep. I have a feeling like it kind of seeps into the um, paper much slower than it normally would. Of course, there's something already in the paper, so that's natural, but... It's a very interesting feeling. It doesn't really affect the way you're painting, it just uh, feels different. So here I'm just making a flat wash and we're almost at the end of the video. You can see how I'm helping myself with <laughs> kind of supporting the uh, paintbrush with my hand with the finger because I don't want to touch anything. And deepening the color. And you can see in some places, if you look really closely, where the watercolor is um, showing the water, the um, colorless blender. And that's about it. That's uh, everything that I've done different in this painting. Here is a finished version, as you can see. I've added all the characters, very bloody. And you can see the background much clearer, with all the details and highlights. I hope that you liked this video and that you've got inspired to try it yourself. It's a really cool way of using markers once you have like a limited amount of them because you know color is blender, one color and you're done and then watercolor on top. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you like the video, there will be more of them coming and uh, I will see you in the next video.